and all that went fine. Now I can start actually assigning work to where the students are only going to see the things that I post to them. So when I can press the add button right here, I could post student work. So sometimes I post pictures to add to students' portfolios of what they're working on in class. Or I could post a video of myself sharing something that I want to share with just some of the students or all of the students. But I can also assign activities and send announcements out to students or parents or both, which is really, really nice. What I want to show you guys specifically though is the assign activity section. So here's my activity library. These are just the things that I've either worked on, adjusted, or created. Now I could also go to my school. My school section is going to have every activity that the teachers in my school have worked on. Right now I'm just set to first grade, but you can change that category and mix it up to see all the different activities that teachers in your school have either adjusted, changed, or done whatever to. You can also go to community and this one is really cool because you can search just about anything and there's already going to be pre-made activities that are going to pop up. So if I'm in first grade, I can scroll down and find all sorts of great resources or people that have created these resources that are going to be awesome for my students to do whether they're at home during e-learning or if they're at school and I want them to do something in small groups or independently. Now what's really great about the pre-made activities is a lot of them have the instructions already embedded into it so you don't have to go about doing all of that extra planning and prep. Take a look, I chose family interview, how to use math. So this could be a great e-learning activity just to get students excited about interviewing somebody. That is a skill in ELA, just being able to communicate with one another and share thoughts and ideas. But then it also talks to them about math and how math is really used in real life, which is a great resource for them. It walks them through every step, every button that they have to press. If students can't read the instructions on their own, they can play the instructions that are already set up. Math is everywhere. Have fun this week interviewing a family member and asking how they use math every day. So if they are a struggling reader, you can still have them do these types of activities at home. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press assign. If you have multiple classes, you can assign it to more than one class at the same time. I'm going to assign it to my test class and press assign. Now I can view this activity in my test class and you can see that I have two assignments set up for Tommy, or not Timmy, Timmy and Tommy, or whoever I set it up as. Now if you're going to post other work for students to do or you just want to share something that you are doing and that you want students to work on, you could just press the plus button, post student work, and there's a lot of things you can do. You can add a drawing and when you're doing that drawing you could add in text. You can add in actually writing on your screen if you have a touch screen. A lot of things you can do there. You could take a photo, you could take a video, you could upload something that you've already done. So if you have a PowerPoint that you wanted to share with students or something like that, you can do that. You could also send links out to students. So if you have a YouTube video that you want them to watch, for example, you can send that link and it will embed that video in that post, which is awesome. Now something that's really, really valuable that I want you to see is in the ad section, if I press post student work, I can press drawing and you might think that that's, oh, that's kind of boring, I'm just going to draw a picture. No, you can do stuff in real time with your students. So let's say you got the parent that's like, oh, I don't get this new math. I don't understand how to teach them this topic. When you press drawing, there's a lot of different things that you can do here. The first thing I want to point out is right now I'm on my marker. So if I draw a line, it's actually going to draw it for me. But when I record this, it can actually create the drawings in real time as I'm doing it while it's recording my voice. I can add text in and I can also change the background and the color of the marker too over here. So if I press these three dots and I press background, I can change if I'm working on writing, I could have lined paper in the background that's walking the student through that and then when I create an assignment, I could have that same lined paper in there so that way they can watch me do it and then they can do it themselves. I could have grid paper if I'm working on graphing or I could just have a fancier background if I want to be a little bit more exciting. Now that I'm ready to start recording, there's a bunch of things I could do beforehand. So if I wanted to create something beforehand, like a text box saying what we're going to be working on, I don't know, multiplication chart. I don't know, let's pretend. And I'm going to press that. I'm going to move it up here. I can also change the background of this or the style. I can change the color of it. So that way it matches with my stuff if I wanted to. Okay. Now I'm going to record and I want to walk you guys through all the different pieces that can actually happen while you're recording in real time. Okay, so I'm going to press the record button right here. It's going to be recording my voice and my screen while I'm doing this stuff. So when I press record, it's going to count me down three, two, one. Hi everybody, welcome to my multiplication chart. We're going to work on some multiplication problems today. So I want to start off with four times three and we're going to see if we can create an array to do that, I'm working on it, we're close. And now I have 
four groups of three. So if I count those three, six, nine, 12, my answer is 12. Now I just press the done button up at the top. There's a lot of things that I can do here. I can re-record. You can also see up in the top and, oh, maybe I can, if I hide really close, oh, can you see the add page button right behind me? There's an add page button down at the bottom. I could add another page for students to watch. So if this is just the first step, they can press the next arrow when they're done with this page and go to another one. But I'm gonna play this back and show you what it looks like. Hi everybody, welcome to my multiplication chart. We're gonna work on some multiplication problems today. So I wanna start off with four times three and we're gonna see if we can create an array I'm going to pause that there. Now I could re-record this, I could restart it over, and I could add more to it as well. Now it's worth noting that if you have a picture of a problem that you want to take a picture of and then do that writing and drawing and recording over it, you can do that too. So if you have a photo or even a video or an upload of a PowerPoint or whatever that you want to use, you can use those same things and then incorporate writing, recording, text boxes on top of it too. Roll that out to your students before you send out the assignment. So that way they actually know what they're doing. Okay, so I'm now signed in as Timmy as one of Mr. Thielen's students because I wanted to show you guys a couple things. I'm signed in underneath that special code for the home learning. So now I can only see Timmy. I can only see what he has been assigned or in his journal, only things that have been posted by Mr. Thielen to everybody or just to Timmy. So because of that, when I go to my activities and I press add a response to this one that I signed, Let's say I, I know I'm supposed to record a video for that one, but let's pretend I'm supposed to do a note. I could say, hi, Mr. Thielen. And since I'm already signed in as myself, check this out. When I press this check up here, there's also a draft button because it knows who it's signed in as. This student can save a draft of their work and they can go back and finish it later before their teacher can actually take a look at the final product. So the teacher is going to see the draft and know that the student's working on it but they're not all the way done yet, which is a great feature that otherwise isn't available if you're still on that shared devices setting that we talked about in the beginning. Okay, I'm now signed back in as Mr. Thielen because I want to show you guys what this looks like. I can go to activities here, and you can now see that there's one draft. So it's not all the way done, two aren't completely done, but I can see that, that a student is working on those things. So when I click on it, here is Timmy's draft that he is working on. So I can see in real time that students are working on these activities, even if they're not all the way done. Again, a feature that wasn't available if students were signed in on these shared devices. In Timmy's draft, I can give him real time feedback while he's working on those things if I want to, or I could even go in and edit it if I really wanted to, and then share a note with him or anything like that stuff is possible through Seesaw. Okay, so that's all that I have for you today in regards to Seesaw, getting things set up, and making sure that you're getting the best bang for your buck when you're using this program. All of the great things that are there, they're really valuable, so make sure that you continue to use Seesaw. I'm going to have an advanced video of Seesaw coming out soon that will walk you through some more intricate steps of creating an actual lesson for yourself and all that good stuff, so stay tuned.